West Ham conclude our pre-season preparations for the 22-23 season with a friendly battle against League 1 outfit R.C. Len, Lon, whatever you want to pronounce him, at the Stade Borier Delier on Saturday evening, Saturday afternoon, tonight, this afternoon, however you want to look at it. There's a little time difference, of course, there is as well. Now, West Ham did play out a one all draw last time out against Luton Town, whilst Lon had a memorable 1 0 victory over Inter Milan. And despite narrowly missing out on a place in European football last term, Leon proved that they can go toe-to-toe with some of the finest opposition that the continent has to offer, especially last weekend, as Frank Hayes, who is the Len manager, Lon manager, continues to take Lon to new heights. Welcome back to the West Ham Network. My name is Anton. If you are new around here, please make sure you do hit that subscribe button. Um, if we're on the march towards 20,000 subscribers. Please hit that thumbs up and, of course, leave your comments below. So, yes, we have the final friendly of the season and I'm looking forward to it, of course, as hopefully are you. However, Lon did play into Milan, who were boasting the likes of Lukaku, Barella, Martinez, and a 90th minute goal from this man here, Luis Openda, and that's their new signing, got the job done for the league inside. They've been much of a surprise package, you could say, in their homeland over the last couple of years. Now, since leading loans back to League Un back in 2020, Hayes has achieved back-to-back seventh-place finishes. You can see the similarity between the two clubs, um, and he now must prepare for a new season without his some of his big-time players. Sheik Decor and Jonathan Claus, um, and are, are, I think they're kind of injured just now. And then Simon Banza and Quarantine Jean have also moved on to Pastures New. So they're missing some of their big guns. However, they did keep a hold of their midfield maestro Seco Fofana, who represents a true statement of intent for the European outsiders, who have won four of their five friendly matches so far this season, conceding only one goal in the process. Now, someone you do know, not this name that I'm going to mention, the long goalkeeper, uh, Farinez, is working his way back from an ACL injury, which could render him and will render him unavailable probably to around some point in February. But they did sign someone that we probably all know at the time from the championship, and that is Bryce Samba from Nottingham Forest after he moved um, to RC Lawn in the summer. Now, Adam Busca also arrived um, in the summer for Nottingham, uh, sorry, for Lawn, um, but he came with an ankle injury, so he will miss out as well. But they do have Opinda, who is their new signing, who obviously got the goal against Inter Milan and can maybe show signs of getting forward and attacking, and they seem to be quite an attacking side as well. So what do we know about RC Long? Right, here we go. Let me get into it. See if I can bring this up for you. There you go. You got that in front of you there. So they were formed in 1906 and they were crowned champions of France in the 1997 and 98 season, having and then have finished as runners up in Ligue 1 on four other occasions. They reached three French Cup finals and won the UEFA Intertoto Cup in 2005 and 2007, which we know really well. They were coached by former Rouen, Laval, and anger midfielder Frank Hayes, who, of course, I've spoke about, and long won. Um, promotion back to League 1 in 2020 and enjoyed a fine 21-22 season, finishing 7th on the table, ahead of Lyon, Non, uh, and defending champions Leo, and only missing out on European qualification by four points as well. Hayes has made a number of summer signings, like I've mentioned, including Nottingham Forest, Championship Playoff Penalty, Shootout Hero, Bryce Samba, Belgium, international striker who I've spoken about, Openda, and has enjoyed two productive seasons um, with... Dutch club Vitesse and the Poland forward Adam Buska, who has done likewise at the MLS side New England Revolution. Now, their home ground is the Stade Borier Delier. It is a 38,000 seater stadium. They're expected to have 
1,000 West Ham fans in there. Tomorrow it was used in the UEFA Euro 1984 and the 1998 FIFA World Cup and the Euro 2016, as well as the 99 and 2007 Rugby World Cups. So um, we have previously played them once, and this was a long, long time ago, back in 19. 19- 36 of the month May. A friendly match was played out at the end of the postseason tour of Switzerland and France and ended in a 3 2 win for the French club. What's interesting about it is West Ham squad visited the first World War cemeteries at the time and toured memorable and the memorial trenches um, in Vimney Ridge. Um, and the players also tooled the colliery but declined an invitation to go down to the pit. The players headed on the tour. Toulon and original the original stadium that they played at, where they were beaten despite getting and scoring two goals from Scottish striker Peter Simpson, which was a tough image to get a hold of. Um, something else we share in common is several players that have played for both of our beautiful clubs, and here they are here. Some names you will know. Um, Papa Diop, um, Diara, of course, Ariola, who is playing in our side just now, Titi Kamara, Diami. Um, so some of these players that played well for West Ham, some of them didn't so much. Uh, and then obviously Mark Vivian Foley, um, God rest his soul, rest in peace, Mark. Um, and so there you go, some some big names to play for both of the clubs as well so please leave your comments and let me know if you know anything else about lon on the lead up to the game the later on this afternoon now let's get on to west ham and one positive note for david moyes is that west ham have managed to find the net in all of our six preseason games so far but on a negative note we're now winless in four of our matches after being held to a one-all draw by Luton Town, but it is only a friendly, so let's not worry about it. It's pre-season. It serves its meaning for what the players have to do. Now, Tommy Suchek <coughs> met Aaron Creswell's cross to head home the opener at Kenilworth Road um, last weekend, and they obviously, Luton Town, bundled home a goal at the end to make it one all. And West Ham did fail to beat Borehamwood, Reading and Rangers on our travels during the pre-season period, which began back-to-back wins over Servette and Ipswich Town. But we do have a new number nine, or you could say a number seven, the Italian international number nine, but now is West Ham's new number seven, is in town, Skamaka. Are we going to see a bit of Skamaka coming off the bench or starting the game? I don't think he'll start, but I think we'll see what Skamaka is capable of doing because David Moyes will want to see him running out with the team and see where his fitness levels are, of course, as well. Now, West Ham haven't played any of our friendly. There is no Betway Cup at the London Stadium. We've played no games at the, um, the London Stadium this summer. However, there is a baptism of fire because we are taking on Manchester City that are be playing on the day one of the new season a week on Sunday. Now, another player that um, we definitely know it's going to be out is Aguerd, who sustained an ankle ankle ligament damage and has recently undergone surgery. Hopefully he comes back sooner rather than later. Now, we do know things about Craig Dawson's obviously been missing a little bit and uh, Issa Diop is wet back with the squad training and with the squads. Um, and Ben Johnson could uh, potentially partner Kurt Zuma at the back. But um, what will be interesting to see is when it comes to the Skamaka and the Antonio debacle, if he brings Skamaka on, does he take Antonio off? Or will we start to see what David Moyes is thinking moving into the Premier League, moving forward? Oh, sorry. I thought I was going to sneeze there. So this is going to be probably one of our closest teams to the starting 11 we'll see for Man City. Now, I don't know if the starting 11 will be or the ending 11 will be, but I think we'll see more closeness to what he's going to do if he doesn't start with Antonio that doesn't mean Anto- and starts with Skamaka that doesn't mean they can't play together because he could quite easily put Antonio out onto the left but it will make for an interesting reading because usually you start to get the vibe of what's actually going to happen 
um, for the last preseason game on the lead up to this. Now, we're not finishing the transfer window. I can see more players coming in, so I'm not worried about that. Let's hope we get Kostic through the door. I think that would be a great signing for us and hopefully a few more. The window is still open for another month or so, so don't worry about that. But it'd be nice to get some people in sooner rather than later. But it'd be nice to see this man get off the score sheet tomorrow on his debut in a preseason friendly and get himself firing on all cylinders and prepared for the big Man City game moving forward. Now, like I said and said at the start, if you are new around here, please do hit the subscribe button. Um, please hit the thumbs up and please leave a comment. We're on the march towards 20,000 subscribers. Another thing to be interested in is, obviously it's been pre-season. We've seen a lot of youth players there. Is this going to be the last we see of Connor Coventry? I'm not sure. He's not really had a huge amount of game time in the pre-season, so I'm not sure we're actually going to really see him. I'm not sure if we're really going to see a lot of Okaflex this season either. These are probably going to be the breakthrough seasons for them to see if they're actually capable of making the step up. What will be interesting is to see how David Moyes utilises Antonio because we will have Skamaka in the team, which will make for interesting um, viewing, of course, as well. What will these signings do for the likes of Lanzini um, performing in the team? Flynn Downs, will he come into the team or will David Moyes stick with his trusted Tommy Suchek? And, of course, Declan Rice. We've not heard a lot, really, about the likes of Ben Rama, but I think he has a role to play for West Ham this year. It'll be good to see Jared Bowen get um, some game time again on the park, get himself prepared, hopefully, for another historic season at West Ham. And this man, Nikolai Vlasic, will we see him still being in Claret Blue come the start of the season? Leave your comments in the comment section. Thank you for watching. Stay safe. And, of course, come on, you irons.